Hey everybody, so in this video we'll be going over all of the things that have been added or changed in version 1.3.7 of Crocodile 3D. First of all, let's take a look at a new uh, feature that allows you to realign vertices to the grid. Basically, while you're in edit mode, you could right click, go to vertices, and then choose align vertices to grid. Or you could use the shortcut key, um, the O key. And so how you'd use this is say you have a tile and maybe you're using a grid rounding value of 8. So what that does is it allows you to move everything like 8 pixels at a time as you can see. Okay. Say you've kind of stretched things out a bit. Maybe you've split the tile this way and maybe that way maybe that way so now you have all these different vertices that are kind of located at different positions and so if you click one over here and then you like move the cursor around now the cursor is kind of like off the grid basically okay so now now you could basically Mm, select these for instance or maybe just yeah select these and with that grid uh, the grid rounding value you could right click and go align vertices to grid and what that does it realigns the vertices to the grid basically now in this case it kind of looks weird and you probably wouldn't want to do that but this is just as a example of what it can do so now these vertices are all aligned. Now you could also undo that and then use a smaller value to make the grid smaller like 4 by 4 pixels and then maybe select these and align those and now those are aligned to a grid that's 4 by 4 pixels basically. As you can see as you move the crosshair around it aligns with all the other pixels or all the other vertices. Now it created gaps there because we don't have other, um, other uh, what's the word, splits. But we could go back. We had a split there and there just to make it look right. So now if we do this and do it again, there's no gaps. But now those are aligned to the grid. This is just an example, you know, kind of a strange case, but for uh, another instance um, where this might be useful is um, say you have one uh, one of these pix uh, one of these vertices like uh, like that, and you can't get it back onto the um, the other vertice there as you can see you could click and drag it and and hold shift and snap it there and say you could let's say you have a bunch of them you could just click and I mean select those choose grid rounding value of say one and then go vertice align vertices to grid Let's see if they're closer together it'll work. Line vertices to grid and now they're kind of together okay so that that kind of helps um, bring vertices that are like close together but not completely close together <laughs> not completely overlapping so that's one way to like fix small little gaps that there might be next thing that we'll look at is ability to set a 3d tile scale both the X and Y values before it was just uh, one value that it would set for both of them and what that would cause is basically um, it 
would basically only allow you to have square tiles like this for instance but you could now set them independently so now you could have rectangular shaped tiles as well and like say you could set it to 2 by 1 and then set the UV size to 32 by 16 so now you have you know rectangular tile that is like 32 pixels wide 16 pixels high and this is just an example you could use different values or 1 by 2 and have um, 16 by 32 in that case and you could also along with this you could select multiple tiles and that works out also so that's useful okay so next is I fixed an issue related to clicking tiles next to the scroll bar so you can see the scroll bar here now before there was an issue that if there's a scroll bar you wouldn't be able to click right next to it so it wouldn't let you click tiles that are positioned right next to it so like if we zoomed in a little more you have this other scroll bar you wouldn't have been able to click right next to it so it kind of made it seem like some tiles weren't clickable but it was related to some positioning regarding the scroll bars and things like that so that should be fixed now next uh, when exporting and you chose uh, merge vertices here there were some instances where some vertices would not get merged but now it should be fixed so now all of the vertices get merged okay and next I changed uh, the settings a little bit and added different sections as you can see now we have a general section which has more generalized um, options like the resolution window and other stuff that don't really particularly fit into any other category we have a camera section that has just camera stuff and the reason I created these sections is because all of these things were kind of getting a little um, there, weren't, there wasn't really as much space for more options so as we add more features and add more options and things like that we'll need we'll need space to put them and so now we have a camera section so if I add more camera stuff like maybe the ability to add uh, some fog effects or things like that we'll be able to add them in here and there's a draw mode and edit mode and tile sets so that just helps kind of um, organize things a little bit better and allow more room to add other options and things like that okay so next I fixed a issue with hiding and showing the lines uh, if you press the zero key sometimes the f I mean well yeah all the time the first time you press it it wouldn't work but now the first time you press it it works and it removes the the lines so then you could like take a screenshot without those getting in the way and you can turn them back on by pressing zero key again okay so next there is a vertice size option so as you can see here the vertices are sized about this big and you may want to resize them so you go into settings and go into edit mode and there's a vertex size here and the default size is 15 so if we set it to say 5 and close that now the vertices are much smaller so they're smaller but they might be a little more difficult to click on because they take up less space 
So you might like that, you might not like that. Okay. And so you can adjust it to whatever value that suits you. Set it to 10, and so they're not as small and not as big. And the larger they are, the more they might get in the way. And the smaller they are, the the more precision you may may be required to click on them. Okay, so there's that. So next, uh, improved various uh, things related to selecting, clicking, and dragging vertices. So uh, sometimes in the past. Uh, things wouldn't be able to get clicked and you'd have to like move the camera and look around and to fix that problem maybe you've ran into that issue so now when you click on something it should click all the time and based on if you have the camera based selection enabled so that you only select things that are facing towards you um, there should be no issue with that either. So things in general with clicking vertices and selecting them, they should be um, improved. I also improved the way the application quits. If you quit or choose to quit, it tells you if there are un unsaved changes, are you sure you want to quit? And then you could save your changes and once you save them next time you try to quit it won't prompt you anymore it'll just quit and it'll also ask you when you load a scene it'll tell you there are unsaved changes loading a new scene will cause you to lose these changes and you can be like okay or you can cancel and then save and if there are no more changes that have been made it'll just allow you to load something okay and so there's that. Another feature that has been added is the ability to move forward and backwards. So you could hold spacebar and hold down Y to move forward, hold spacebar and hold down H to move backward. And so this might be useful as another way of maneuvering around your scene. You could hold it down and just use the mouse to rotate with the left mouse button. You could use this to basically just move around the scene. If you zoom in a little bit, the rotation will be closer to the camera. And so it might look it might feel more like um, like a first person sort of uh, movement, right? If you zoom out a lot and then, rotate around it'll kind of rotate around an invisible point in front of you in front of the camera so that's what happens when you zoom out and zoom in and then move around so spacebar Y and H to move forward and backward and you could use that in conjunction with the other mouse controls move around and then lastly I added a recently opened otherwise list. If you don't here. use that, you could just um, so files that you've recently opened or saved, it, they rotate, get listed here, and so around, you could reopen them, reposition them stuff, that sort of thing. Open the application, so way choose a scene that you've um, worked on recently. So say if you ha if you haven't, so if you've already been working on something and there are unsafe changes, sort of prompt you controls you want to use. And then this way, you don't really have to move your hands that much. You'll just load the scene that if you, you want. want you kind of shift your hand over and use the and so Y load another one, H keys like that. Just different and it goes different ways of doing it. things, moving around the scene. Okay. So those are the changes, the improvements, and things like that that have been added to version 1.3.7 of Crocodile 3D.